recently, some of you might know, I don't know how many people watch the video, but I had made a off-season rankings video, ranking the um, best team off-season versus the worst team off-season. Essentially, if you got number one on that list, you were the you had the best off-season out of all the MLB teams. And if you got last, you're the worst offseason out of all the MLB teams. That project was an absolute chore to do, by the way. Oh my gosh, making those graphics took forever. But now, since, you know, the MLB season has been postponed for so long, that project has now lost priority and meaning. It, it kind of got ruined by the coronavirus. Uh, so I, I wanted to do something that was like that. And now after the draft with, you know, Joe Burrow, two with tags, and... Justin Herbert going to uh, three teams, three different teams, where they could make pretty big impacts possibly this season. I thought it would be a cool idea to to rank every team's quarterback from 32nd, you know, worst team quarterback to the best team quarterback. Now, I'm not going to be going over the whole quarterback death chart, but what I'm basically going to be doing is taking the each team's starting quarterback and ranking them from 32 being the worst to 1 being the best. This is going to be a lot more fast-paced than the off-season video. I'm going to try and get this done in about 15 minutes. I'm only going to spend about, hopefully, 30 seconds on each team. So let's get into it. At number 32, the Los Angeles Chargers sit with Tyrod Taylor and Justin Herbert. People are already speculating that Herbert's going to be a bust, and Tyrod Taylor hasn't been a starter since he was with the Browns. So, yeah. Not looking good for the Chargers. Number 31, the New England Patriots. People are gonna hate me for this, but let's be honest, we haven't seen anything of Jared Stidham. He hasn't really proved himself that much, and in comparison to the other quarterbacks that I saw, he just did not deserve to be ranked higher than them. So sorry, Patriots fans. Number 30 sits the Washington Redskins with Dwayne Haskins Jr. Um, he had some playing time last season not a lot but you know I don't was it enough for me to say oh he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league no sorry I mean I could be wrong but he's just got to show me that he's worth it number 29 the Chicago Bears with Mitchell Trubisky this is gonna be probably pretty controversial along with some of the other ones but in all honesty I don't think Mitchell Trubisky turned out to be the quarterback any of us thought he was going to. I don't want to call him a complete bust just yet, but he's definitely not showing the success that the Bears were hoping for. Number 28 lies the goldfish of the NFL, the Miami Dolphins. I wasn't sure who to put as the first string quarterback, so I just kind of put both Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua Tagovailoa because I'm not really sure which one they're gonna start according to their, to their death chart. Either way, Tua is new to the NFL and injury prone, and then Ryan Fitzpatrick is Ryan Fitzception. When, you, when you're between injury prone and Fitzception, you know you're not gonna be that solid at quarterback this year, but maybe Tua impresses us, who knows? Number 27 sits the New York Jets with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold got mono. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're to blame the Jets organization for not building enough around Darnold, or just maybe Darnold isn't cut out to be the quarterback everyone thought he was going to be. At number 26, the Detroit Lions sit here. Uh, very, probably another controversial one. Matthew Stafford on the Lions at 26. You know, I know that Stafford has shown some pretty good numbers throughout his career, but what has it led the, the, the Lions to? What have the Lions benefited from this? It's just unfortunate that despite the success that Stafford has had, it hasn't done much to help his team. And that's why I am putting him this low. Number 25, the Lost Vegas Raiders with Derek Carr. Derek Carr, what an average performing quarterback. I mean, there's just really nothing special about Derek Carr. Um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> At 24 sits the Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger, he missed basically all of last year to an injury. He is getting old. Um, the reason I put him this high was because he, because of the quarterback depth. I know that I said I wasn't going to talk about the quarterback depth, but Mason Rudolph and Drew Hodges both had time as starters. So it's kind of weird where they sit, the Steelers. But I mean, a declining Roethlisberger who people weren't even sure was going to come back this year. Yeah. Number 23, the Jacksonville Jaguars with Minshew Magic, Gardner Minshew. Um, showed some promise, but 
I don't think I've seen enough from this guy to really say he's one of the best in the league. Um, I think he does have a lot of potential. Uh, he also wears like jorts and has a weird mustache. And who am I kidding? Gardner Mission's the freaking bomb. At number 22, we got the Denver Broncos and Mr. Laserbeam, Drew Locke. Now, Drew Locke's appearance last season came kind of out of nowhere. You know, Flacco struggled heavily, but I don't think we expected to see Drew Locke come out and have success this soon. Um, I haven't seen enough of him for him to really prove himself as a starting caliber quarterback, but, you know, he could have a good future. But because he's, you know, so up in arms about how good he's going to be, I had to put him this low. Had the Bengals not drafted Joe Burrow, they would have been much lower than number 21. Uh, Andy Dalton was <laughs> historically bad as a quarterback leading the team, but with Burrow, he's a really, really, really good prospect. We don't know how good he's exactly going to be until we actually see him play, but I think it's safe to say that the Bengals have a lot of potential with Burrow at the realm as opposed to Dalton. So I put him up at 21. Uh, I think, you know, he could have the potential to be better than all of the quarterbacks listed before, but we're going to have to see. For those of you who are going to say that because I'm a New York fan and I'm a Giants fan that I'm going to be biased, ha, I put Daniel Jones at number 20 because that's realistic. Daniel Jones showed a lot of promise in his rookie season last year, but... It still wasn't enough to get the Giants past the fourth pick in the draft, which means they had, a terrible, they had a terrible record, which they did have a terrible record. So, you know, while Jones was good, he's not a team leading quarterback. Um, he's still pretty average. So this is the highest I could really put him. Teddy Bridgewater puts the Carolina Panthers at 19. That's right, 19 for Teddy Bridgewater. This guy went on a huge run with the Saints last season. And Drew, I mean, Drew Brees is Drew Brees. When he came back, of course, the Saints were gonna, you know, go with him. But oh my gosh, was Bridgewater probably one of the best second string quarterbacks last season. And, you know, he's been, we've been waiting for him to do something like this for a long time. You know, he's been in the reserves for a long time, hasn't really gotten a starting chance. Hopefully with Carolina, he can continue his success from last year. And because of his success from last year, I put him at 19. This might be another controversial pick, but 18 is the Atlanta Falcons quarterback, Matt Ryan. You know, the thing is, Matt Ryan's a good quarterback. He is, it's just the team around him that really isn't helping him to succeed as much as he should be doing. He puts up good stats every year for the most part. And even though he blew that, you know, Super Bowl game against the Patriots, I still think that Ryan is a good quarterback. However, I think other quarterbacks either have more potential or have just shown that they can take their teams further into the playoffs than Ryan has, which is why he's in the middle. Another team where I wasn't sure who the starting quarterback was is the Indianapolis Colts with Philip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett, the brisket man. Sorry, Jacoby, but every time I hear your name, it makes me think of brisket. Now, the thing is with the Colts is that it's, it's confusing. I wasn't sure whether to put these guys in the middle of the pack or at the bottom of the pack. But when you think about it, even though Rivers is older and declining and he wasn't great, you know, leading the Chargers last season, I do still think there is a lot of talent with Rivers. Jacoby Brissett has shown a lot of potential throughout his career. So even if Rivers doesn't do good, Brissett's is still a good option. So you have kind of like a dual first string quarterback thing going on. Number 16 is Arizona Cardinals quarterback, Kyler Murray. I don't know about y'all, but I love what I saw from Kyler Murray. He can run, he can throw, he's a good quarterback. I'm glad he didn't sign with the Oakland Athletics. I do think he can have a great NFL career. I just think the Cardinals have to build a team around him. That being said, still a rookie. Um, he wasn't the best quarterback by any means, but I think the potential is there and I think he'll be even better this year. Um, and I do think he is still a solid quarterback if we go off of what his stats were last year. Now that I'm reading numbers 15 through 11, I think this is probably the most controversial rankings for me when it comes to quarterbacks. So just clench your fists, get your stress balls and hang in tight. This is gonna be a rough one. Number 15 is Dallas Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott. Now listen, I'm a Giants fan, so I mean, I'm not a hardcore football fan, so I know like the Cowboys Giants rivalry thing or whatever that they have going on is like, I should, you know, I oh, Dak Prescott. No, I mean, it's whatever. But I don't know, Dak is still a good quarterback. Like I understand that the Cowboys have been mediocre despite having Elliott, Prescott, and other key additions. But I don't know, there's just something about Prescott where I feel like he, he doesn't get enough love. 
Like, he's not the best quarterback, but he's still pretty good, you know? Well, I don't think he's really matched his rookie season, which was pretty good. Um, I still think that he can lead this team. And I think he can recreate what he did in his rookie year. Just saying. At number 14, we have Jared Goff. Um, another quarterback I didn't really know where to put, but I mean, he did take his team to the Super Bowl and then flopped in the Super Bowl. But I think with the right guidance and the right focus on his end, I do think he can get himself back to that caliber of quarterback that he was who took the Rams to the Super Bowl. You know, I do think that he can get back there. So that's why I have him this high. Number 13 is a quarterback. When I had my only year in fantasy football, I wanted to take this guy even though he wasn't a starter and he was a rookie, Baker Mayfield. This is a guy who came in in the game because Tyrod Taylor got hurt and beat the Jets and ended the Browns losing streak. And they were gonna have not too bad of a run that year. And while the Browns didn't have a great season this past season, they didn't have the season everyone thought they were gonna have, it's his second year. You know, I think when you have that many, that many expectations put on you, it's kind of hard to live up to that amount of hype and the pressure could have gotten to Baker, but I think that the talent is still there, which is why I have him this high. At number 12 is the man whose bones are made of glass, Carson Wentz. This dude has an illness related to the playoffs. Anytime his team gets close to the playoffs, his bones turn into freaking like feathers or something. I don't think he's ever really made it to the postseason. He's always gotten injured before, except for this past season where he got injured in the postseason and they had to bring in Josh McCowan who shit the bed. That being said, Carson Wentz has led the Eagles to the postseason in three consecutive seasons. He's been the major quarterback or th through, through the majority of their season. So that's gotta tell you, he's pretty good. At number 11, people are gonna hate me for this, Ryan Tannehill. Now, I know that Tannehill hasn't been this amazing quarterback that he was for the Titans through his whole career, but, I mean, I will echo most people's uh, thoughts, is that basically, Tannehill was very restricted by the Dolphins system. It was that particular organization that was just creating Tannehill to be a disappointing quarterback. You know, multiple teammates have said, bro, you know, you've always been talented. It's just that that team was just toxic. It's like the New York Mets in the MLB where, you know, they take that jersey off and they're no longer having the absolute life force sucked out of them by the Wilpons, you know? I feel like the Dolphins are the same thing, and now that Tannehill is on the Titans, which is a team with a solid foundation, clearly, I think he's gonna be pretty good next year. Ladies and gentlemen, get your pitchforks out, because I have Tom Brady and the Buccaneers at number 10. I feel like I say this at the beginning of every season, but Tom Brady is old. He's never been a mobile quarterback, and yes, he's good. He's a good quarterback. Can't deny it, but now that he's on a new team, playing under a new coach, a whole new offensive system, new talent, he's gonna have to, you know, learn those things and be able to adapt to this new team. I'm not saying he can't do it, I'm just saying that I don't think we're gonna see the amount, the sheer amount of success that he had with New England. If we do, I'm gonna have to never say another word about Tom Brady because I've shit on him a lot. Um, privately and in videos, uh, he's a good quarterback, but I don't know. Him and the Patriots, I don't like him. Who, how can you like someone who wins every year? Says a hypocritical Yankee fan, but eh, whatever. At number nine is Jimmy Garoppolo at the 49ers. Now, I will say that Garoppolo isn't the best quarterback, but I do think that, you know, he showed it, that potential in the Patriots, and he just took the 49ers to the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong, they had a great defense, but Jimmy G has talent. You can't deny that. And it's pretty damn good talent. And it showed on the success of the 49ers last year. They still had a good offense. So for that, I put him here at nine. And next at number eight is a quarterback I feel like does not get enough love. Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know what it is about this quarterback, but I don't know. Like I had him on my fantasy team a couple years back. He was amazing. He's, he's basically the heart and soul of the Vikings. I mean, he just took him to the postseason. I think this guy has great talent. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. You can't deny it. So yeah, number eight. Don't like it, fight me. This next guy is one of the guys that me and the other Brady deniers will say is the actual great best quarterback of all time. Drew Brees, even though it's probably not true, but hey, Drew Brees is a pretty good quarterback, all right? Don't get me wrong, he's getting pretty old, you know? He did still lead the Saints pretty well last year, but I don't know, it's just, it seems like, like him and Brady are these two guys, you keep saying, oh, he's getting old, he's getting old, 
but they never start doing bad. But I don't know, at any point, Breeze could start doing not that great. That being said, we haven't seen it yet, so I'm to assume that he's going to be the same great Drew Brees for the Saints next year. So that puts him this high at number seven. At number six is the quarterback that impressed me the most last year, Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. The things that Josh Allen did in the playoffs, while it wasn't a long run at all, they actually only had one game, was impressive to say the least. Oh my gosh, Josh, dude, you're amazing. Josh Allen in his only second year as a quarterback led the Bills to a great season and into the playoffs. And he did it in style. Oh my gosh, this guy has talent beyond belief. And I think honestly, he could definitely be in, in a few years, when you know all like you know Brady and Breeze and all the all the greats are gone, he could be in the top five of quarterbacks without a doubt. I think at number five is the famous Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. You know, I, it's weird because a lot of people consider him to be like one of the best and one of their favorite quarterbacks on the NFL right now. But I have to think about in the top five. You know, who is the most all-rounded? You know, talents. Uh, Rodgers is great. Great arm, great player, but is he one of the best runners? No, and like, I'm saying that as like it's not, like as it's like something bad for him, but when you have to think, when you're ranking the top five, you have to consider every single talent they have, and I think out of the top five quarterbacks, he's, to me, is probably, and this is, I mean, it's hard to say this because he's good, but he's probably the least versatile out of these guys, in my opinion. Number four, the Houston Texans quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Man, this every time I watch this guy, he just blows my mind. And I feel like he is not, I mean, people love him. He's a great quarterback, but I feel like he needs to be given even more attention. This guy can do everything. He can run, he can throw, he can scramble. I mean, Jesus Christ. The only reason he's not higher is because of the other quarterbacks and what they can do. When you think of a quarterback who can take the team and put them on his, truly put them on his back, you think of Russell Wilson. The Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson is just impressive. He is what I just said about Deshaun Watson. He can do it all, but he can do it all to the point where he literally carries the team into the playoffs. Now, I'm not saying the Seattle Seahawks didn't have talent around Wilson as well, but I definitely think if you take Wilson out of their equation, they're not as good of a team. It's just that simple. Number two, the famous, famous Lamar Jackson, who had one of the most mind-blowing years. I mean, this guy is a running back with a killer arm. He's 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 almost better than running backs. You see the freaking jukes this guy did this past season? Now, the reason I cannot put him at number one is simply because when it comes to the playoffs, there's just something about him that does not make me confident in his abilities. Like when he's down, in the playoffs and you see him on the sideline, he's off by himself, he's pissed, he's letting his emotions get to him. That I saw that when they were playing the Titans and it was, oh, it was so hard to watch, dude. And I think with more experience, Lamar Jackson can be that quarterback in the playoffs, but so far, I think he does kind of let his emotions get to him a little bit too much. I see it, I see it when you cut to the sidelines and stuff. And I, I, I don't know, I just think that this next guy, shows a lot more, you know, leadership. And when he was down in a playoff game, he fought back like an animal. That's right. Pat, I mean, this was obvious. Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The, the Chiefs were down by so much to the Texans in the playoffs. And what does Pat Mahomes say? Let's do something special. Let's do something special. They already counted us out. They counted us out, baby. And he freaking, oh my gosh. I, I, I missed most of the game, but when I turned it on and saw the score, my mind was blown. If Lamar can embrace, you know, this kind of leadership qualities and when you're down, don't take yourself out of the count. Don't be like, you know, head in your hands, all sulking. No, you gotta like be calm, as clean as a whistle. Like, nah, dude, you're gonna come back. You're gonna lead your team all the way to victory. Pat Mahomes, he can throw, he can run, he can do it all. I mean, this guy is a talent that we have never seen before. Well, we probably have seen before, but he's a talent that is so special. Honestly, if I, if he has a career as long as Brady and Breeze, oh my gosh, he's gonna be way better than them. Without a doubt, he's gonna blow their numbers out of the water. I, I don't I don't understand how you know what I'm doing. I, I knew I you were gonna turn. I was like, ah, there is nothing telling you I was gonna do that. And the ball was in the air before I did it. So that was it. That was me ranking all 32 starting quarterbacks and their teams from best to worst in the NFL. I have to admit that I'm not as 
knowledgeable about football as I am with baseball. You know, with baseball, I know a lot. But with football, you know, I do know quite a bit. But I haven't been following football as long as I've been following baseball. That being said, from what I know, these are my opinions on the top 32 quarterbacks. Please disagree or, you know, agree. Let me know, you know? Comments are right there below. So, do what you want. And thanks for watching. I hope this is a little bit more faster paced than the off-season video. Um, this will hopefully come out a lot, you know quicker of a turnaround time because there's less editing and graphic stuff I got to do. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Nonsensical Talks. Hopefully more sports stuff keeps happening. Have a good day, everybody.